Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anne. I'm a mentor here on the app, and I will wait a, just a little bit before I get started uh, to let people hop on live. Um, like I said, my name is Anne. I have one homeschool graduate. I have one high school junior, so I am ending. Oh, my years of homeschooling are coming uh, a lot sooner than I ever could have imagined. I live in Texas. Uh, if you'd like to pop on the chat and to let us know where you're from, that's always super fun to see where people are tuning in from. And our topic for today is the Timeline Book. Ah, we got some people from Tennessee and Kentucky. Welcome. And Alabama. I have roots in Alabama. I love Alabama. Um... So thanks for joining us. Michigan, that's actually another one of my favorite places. Uh, my dad is from Alabama, and he will tell you his number one favorite state is Alabama, but his number two is Michigan because of a vacation we took there. Uh, it was so beautiful. We've got Missouri, North Carolina, Alberta. Fant oh, Wisconsin, almost missed that one. Thank you all for tuning in. Our topic for today is the Timeline Book. And don't get concerned when you see mine. Mine is a little old. It actually has a different name. Uh, this thing used to be called the Book of Time. And the cover has actually changed twice. So uh, it's pretty likely that your cover will look different. But the inside is the same and how it works is still the same. So I'm happy to share some tips with you today on how uh, this thing works and how wonderful it is. And hello from Wyoming and Florida and Washington. Thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, so uh, every history Bible literature package from level K on up will use this timeline book. Uh, stickers come with levels K all the way through J. When you hit the 100 levels with high school, you can still use the book and write things in it, but there are no more stickers. A little disappointing, but, but the high schoolers, are, they're okay with that. Um, and the stickers are black and white. Uh, I'll show you the inside of my book in just a sec. Um, so your children can choose to color them if that's something they want to do. Mine never did, so mine are black and white in this book. Uh, how do you know when to use a sticker? If you have your instructor's guide page, you will see that this little uh, icon with the little people on it, that signifies that there is a sticker to put in your book. And you will just need to turn to the back of that schedule page to that day in that book, and it'll tell you exactly which sticker to put. And uh, we have a question from the app. I uh, typed it up here, so I did made sure not to miss it. Lori E. said um, that she realizes the timeline book is meant for logging important figures and events. And yes, that is absolutely true. Uh, but she's having some issues conceptualizing how it exactly fits into everything that we're doing. Is this long-term activity meant to be something like Charlotte Mason's Book of Centuries? Should we aim to place our stickers at the end of each week? Well, I had never heard of the Book of Centuries before, so I looked it up. And indeed, our timeline book does uh, have that same idea as that Charlotte Mason Book of Centuries. So the answer is yes to that. And when should you add the stickers? There are several options you might want to consider. Uh, one method is to look at the sticker and put it in your timeline book before you do the reading that is assigned for that sticker. And that way your child can recognize during, while you're reading, uh, oh wait, that's the person that we put in there, or that's the event that happened that we put in the book. Or you could do your reading and then place the sticker after your reading. And the third option is to wait until the end of the week and take your stickers that you have covered that week and then put them in your book all at once and use that as a review time. And so, my next question is where do I put the stickers? And that seems like a very obvious thing. Well, you stick them, you know, in the book at the date where the sticker says, but you will see that the stickers typically have a date range. And so, the key is to just be consistent. For any stickers that have a date range, you'll want to decide if you're going to put them at the beginning of that range or at the end, or in the middle of that range. And as long as you are consistent, then you have a little bit of, well, consistency with your timeline. If you do start uh, with a younger HPL, by the time you end up at J, you will end up with multiples of the stickers because you do talk about people and events again. 
And so one thing that you can do with any duplicates, if you have chosen to put um, the stickers at the beginning of their time period, then you get a duplicate, you could put it at the end. And then it's super obvious as you're looking through your timeline book, the beginning and the end for either the person or the event. Uh, Crystal says that she they love the timeline book. Uh, I did wonder how did y'all add in the other recommended events that don't have a sticker? Okay, we didn't. We did not add uh, the other events that did not have a sticker. Uh, but some people um, would write those in, handwrite, or just talk about them and look at the space and see what other stickers are around there. Uh, so those are some options there. Uh, did you make your own sticker? Um, that might be an option. Um, I, I don't know if chime in if you have made your own stickers. I honestly haven't really thought about doing that, but that is a neat idea. Um, but you could also uh, just simply write it in or just read um, the details about the one that doesn't have a sticker and look at where it would fall in the book. Because I will tell you, and I'll show you some pages in here, it really does fill up even with just the stickers. And I've uh, got more friends from Michigan and Kansas. And um, yes, the idea of adding an extra one to complete the time span. I did not think of that myself. And by the time I had heard that idea, it was too late for me. Um, so we did not do that. Uh, what we ended up doing, my daughter wanted to stick that person over the person that we already had, just to emphasize, here's that person. So we just doubled up on our doubles. Um, so let me go ahead and show you a couple of things. One of the neat things that the kids will get at a very early age, you know, right smack in the middle of this thing, you know, you'll have this side is BC and this side is AD, and they really get a grasp early on about how the dates do kind of a strange thing in the BC era. How they go um, you know, more recent, it would be year one, and then farther away would be year you know 500 and so on. So they really get a good grasp of the timeline with this book. And when you hit different levels, uh, here we go. We ended up with a very, very, very full, uh, quite a few pages that were super duper full. And um, so what if you run out of room? And that truly can happen, especially if you start at a younger level of sunlight. Uh, so what you can do, a little tip that I learned was to use the to use the backing to your advantage because the whole sticker uh, is all um, well sticky so if you choose to you can just peel off the top part of the backing so that only the top part is sticky and then you can overlap your stickers if it's a person that lived at the same time as someone else or if it was if it was an event that happened at the same time as something else and so let's see I've got a few, a bunch here that we had to overlap so that you can see uh, everything and not miss out on anything. And one of the other mentors has, the, uh, with her, she did um, people above the line and then events below the line, or it might have been the opposite, I don't remember. But I think that's a really neat idea. Of course, I heard about that after we were done. So that's not anything uh, that I could actually do, but I'm happy to pass on that tip to you. It sounds like a really great idea. And uh, I, I thank y'all. Uh, yes, the overlapping idea, um, I love it too. It definitely saved us when it came to putting all this stuff together. Um, now, important question, how many timeline books do you need? That really depends. Uh, some people, some families like to do one per family. Uh, I, I, we chose to do one per child. Uh, so it really depends on what you want to do with it. It is super easy to do one per child because you can easily order extra sets of only the stickers from Sunlight. Um, and so they do make it easy to do that. Another thing, or another reason I liked, like, enjoy doing one per child is they could personalize it a little bit. So when you get to the parts that there aren't any stickers because it's too current, let, actually, wait, let me backtrack a second. Backtrack a second. Uh, okay, super duper busy page down here. They uh, wanted to put their grandparents' names so they could see where they were born. And then they put their parents' names to see where they were born. 
And then they decided to personalize it. And we've got this page with no stickers, of course, but it's filled up with names of friends, names of cats. Uh, and then 2020, you can add the coronavirus to your timeline there. And so now we're in 2022, so it's all blank right now, but who knows what they can put in there. So that's really all the tips I've got. Um, I do hope it helped. Uh, the personalization is, yes, it is great. And um, it really is neat to put when their family members are born. Absolutely. So uh, I'll just wait a second. If you have any particular questions, I'll just wait a second here. Um, but when we are done, uh, I'll put the video in the app. If you guys want to share pictures of your timeline books, uh, feel free to do so. And it is so fun to uh, get ideas from each other. And uh, I thank you all for joining me. You guys have a great afternoon.